to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We enthrone you. We proclaim you are. This is why we gather week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. It is for your glory. It is for your glory that you find a place in our lives, that you find a place in Koinonia. And Lord, we decree and declare that for as long as we are here you will keep being glorified no man no empire no ambition will rise above the purposes of the kingdom we declare that we are a people determined to see your glory come Lord regardless of our personal ambitions and desires we seek only that Jesus and him be glorified the fullness and the essence of all that he is be revealed. I pray in the name of Jesus that you truly be glorified. Can we just sing this song, wonderful song? Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Ah. For your glory be lifted high. I lift you 
Once again be glorified tonight. In the name of Jesus be glorified. We surrender everything to you. And we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you alone will be glorified in this place. In the name of Jesus. Just sit down quietly. Such a strong atmosphere. I want us to pray tonight. Um, but the teaching that I'm bringing tonight will really, really change us. Praise the Lord. For me, I, I have been changed by it and I'm being changed by it and I guarantee you, no matter how, how much you have not felt a sense of spiritual progress, you will feel one tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been studying personally the ministry of Jesus. Um, once and again, I, I have the opportunity to study very carefully what Jesus did, how he did ministry when he walked upon the earth. Because the Bible tells us that we should look unto Jesus, calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, everything we do in this kingdom life must be within the jurisdiction of that which was demonstrated by the Christ himself. He not only came as a substitute for us, he came as a model. He came as a masterpiece of God's intention so that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we will align everything we do to be consistent with both his ideology and his doings. It is only when that happens, listen carefully, that God can be glorified. Jesus has become for us the model of that which can satisfy God. God can only be satisfied in the Christ and in anyone who does anything that is reflective of the Christ. The only basis for God to be satisfied in the life of a man is when Jesus is being glorified and when every activity that man is engaged in is a reflection of both the person, the character of the Christ. So I've been studying the ministry of Jesus and I'm telling you, um, Jesus is truly and literally the greatest inspiration in my life. His, his model, his understanding. Every time I study the Gospels, I am, I am amazed at his spirituality his intelligence his paradigm and his approach to life his approach to people his definition and his approach of ministry his approach of success everything about Jesus Christ inspires me and so as I study him I check my life I check koinonia I check the things that we do against the benchmark of the model the reference that has been created and if at any point i find myself short of that standard or i find our leadership and our approach in the ministry short of that standard then he does not repent to look like us are we to, are we together now the responsibility is upon us to realign ourselves so that we reflect him in his fullness and um it never tires me I've, I've studied the gospel again and again I don't know how many times but quite frankly every time you study scripture with a new light and a new understanding it seems to me as though the higher you rise in the spirit the more certain things in scripture open up to you in a way you never believe they were there not because you are not aware of their reality 
but there is an understanding that makes certain things now open to you because you now have both an experience with God and experience with life that can help you understand those things more personally so the more I grow spiritually the more emotionally connected I am I I no longer just study the Bible for the 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 spiritual education necessarily I I, I see myself I when I study the Bible I'm, I'm very emotional about it many times I'll have to just close the Bible and fight tears because I look at these scriptures and I know how true it is let me tell you something the more you grow in God the more emotionally connected you are to the study of the word you no longer study just for information you you literally become emotionally connected to it because you are rising at a frequency that is closer to the state Jesus and the apostles were when they wrote this so when you study the Bible from that height you are able to not only understand what they are writing but discern the motivation you can literally feel the emotions around the things that they wrote and this is what has been happening to me as I study the Gospels and um, I rediscovered a few things there are things I have known but then for me the Lord nailed it in a way that blessed me so powerfully and part of that is what I'll be sharing tonight briefly and then trust God that we pray hallelujah I have studied many concepts I have taught them um, the concept of sin the concept of holiness the concept of righteousness the concept of the kingdom kingdom advancement the concept of success and prosperity the concept of faith all of these are very important kingdom concepts that must be understood by the believer because if any of these concepts are misunderstood or inaccurately understood they will sponsor error in the life of a believer though well-meaning you will find yourself with a frame of understanding that may shortchange you from experiencing and living the fullness of the life that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. And um, Philippians chapter 2, please. We're going to read 3 and 4 as a foundation for the things that I'll be sharing tonight. My teaching tonight seeks to build in us in a greater measure the character of the Christ as we prepare to wrap up the year we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways and God has really helped us we have enjoyed his benevolence and his grace once and again he will bring in words like this that file us that build us that align us so that our work will be very productive say amen Philippians chapter 2 I'll read 3 and 4 pay attention it says let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves verse 4 look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others when you find the new translations it's an attempt to say that you pay attention to the needs of others above your need I I want to talk um, well I would just start here but I, I'm, I'm really not going to dwell there on the concept the root cause of majority of the challenges that believers have listen please the root cause of jealousy the root cause of envy listen carefully the root cause of lust and addictions the root cause of sin the root cause of um, selfishness the root cause of covetousness you see all of these attributes listen let me teach you something you see spiritual things we know it by now 
are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um god forbid but come if it's an example please if i get this lady pregnant what did i say is an example listen are we together now i'm very serious tonight laugh now because i'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if i get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if i lost after this lady now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her so i will think i am free are, are we are we together now if i slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression but if i hold bitterness and jealousy bitter anger and rage sorry my dear against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the Bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly. Listen, it's more dangerous. It has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress. Are we together now? And for many believers, when you begin to walk in the kingdom, because you are focusing on other things like the anointing, you know, faith, trying to understand redemption, understanding the Pauline epistles, understanding a lot of things, you know, the miraculous visions, prophecies, the gifts of the spirit, because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom, very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things. In fact, usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean, I mean that that's that, let's let's talk of great things like power miracles etc etc but as you rise in god you will discover that the text of your dealing with god will no longer be physical things are we together when god begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested uh, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word is called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed 
that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the holy ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in zaria will not be recorded there are we together god will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom when you study i mean people who have read archaeology and history and all of that you will know that concurrently at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of christ and his purposes are we together now so if god is going to write a little story about your life you will think he will write when you went to the market you will think he will write when you went to abu anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured are you getting what i'm saying now these brothers and sisters is the foundation of our work with god and this state i just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh the flesh thrives upon ownership the flesh thrives upon um personal ambition listen listen you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual so the bible says in first john chapter 2 when you read from verse 16 he says love not the world this is john the apostle now teaching us he says love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world he didn't say don't have them 15. it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body the limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body number two he says the lust of the eyes then number three the pride of life he says is not of the father but is of the world so john the beloved having been mentored directly by jesus christ and understood the 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 very essence of the kingdom life is teaching us in his epistle and he's saying look if you want to be spiritual people you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things 
to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um when i when i when i saw it uh, for me it, it it touched me um what's that that's that's that? not not um not james help me holy spirit second timothy please give us second timothy that should be timothy right second timothy three second timothy three i think i'm right second timothy three please give it to us from verse one to four it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse two for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters they will be proud do you understand the context of that scripture now the foundation is lovers of themselves lovers of themselves is not a point it is the reason why these other things will happen because men shall be lovers of them own, their own self that love for themselves will make them covetous so when they see somebody else's thing they say ah this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude God, you tried, but you can do more. Unholy, uh -huh. without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers. Look at them. Incontinent, fierce, rageful. Why are you touching my reputation? Do you not know I am Apostle Joshua Selman? Lovers of themselves. So that aggression is not a family thing. This is what is leading to it. Why you are angry with everybody? Despisers of those that are good. Can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people? Verse 4. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not god the key word is more than more than 
is like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for God is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you would do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves is why business people fight themselves is why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations I want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness 
the God of your own self. Now, let me tell you something. The devil is smart. He angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of God. Do you understand? It's very subtle. So you think, I love God, I pray. When I sin, I run to God. That's the point. You are not running to God because you love him. You are running to God because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you. It's still you. I want to go to heaven. It's still you. It looks spiritual, but it's still you. Are you seeing? You are still self-centered. That is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of God. When it is about you, Are we together? So I'm trying to walk in holiness so that, um, I mean, I won't do this. If this lady waves me, I don't even want to look at her face because by doing that, God will see me. It's still self-centeredness. It's just a more religious form of it. It's still self-centeredness. Are we together? I'm preparing a nice message and I'm praying in tongues, fasting three days dry. But the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of God. A, a spiritual form of self. The moment it is for you, for your glory, for your reputation. Let me tell you, I can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we, we fight to make things work in our life. You see the way you take the issue of your success too personal. As if your name is on the line itself. It says, For I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Are we together? Watch this. If this comes, Sam. If this is Sam's handkerchief. Now, I love Sam with all my heart. If this is Sam's handkerchief and it falls. Now, I love him and I love the handkerchief, but I do not think I will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief. Are we together? If the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it, is it really Sam's handkerchief? It's mine. I'm trying to claim it. That's what we do with our lives. The level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for god we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay thank you sir. are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered i know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness There's so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God. When 
the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery listen they were scholars they were dragging her to Jesus you would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law they were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus so they did not care who was the scapegoat that being used that was being used let me tell you something about self self-centeredness self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody is the hallmark of self-centeredness when my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether god or man it's none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end ch children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness When a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel, his self-centeredness is not just pleasure, it's self-centeredness. Are we together? When somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing, calling himself a rich man, it is not just money, it is self-centeredness. Because that's somebody's salary in his pocket, he does not care. That somebody has a wife and children, he does not care. All he's concerned about is, let me get this, is it not how we all are? How many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people? Oh, let me talk to you. And I, I say this, please don't take this personal. But I want to talk to you. And, and, and do you know, do you know, sincerely speaking, the worst, the, the worst victims of this are ladies. Sisters, say amen. That's right. Because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met, I've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong, provided they get it. If you tell a lie to get the withdrawn money, no problem let me just wear it if i must corner somebody to buy the iphone 6 iphone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they will be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay you just say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going <sighs> we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of god we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise That's what will make someone come and see someone's food, the last meal, and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it. You were hungry, but you never believed that someone else may have a desire. And as far as your... Do you know, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I have worked among people. Leadership has opened me up to people. There are people whose hearts are bad. Not because they are bad people themselves. The, 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 the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible. Anything that will make it happen, let it happen. If God will suffer to hell with him. Are we together? Yeah. So when a pastor sits down and tells people, all of you, bring five five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to five thousand and says look you better use your faith 
bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual. And people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches. And I looked at him. I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, why are you talking about these things? And he said, no, 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 no. It's not like I have any problem. I said, you do. Are you kidding me? You do. Because the God you claim to be serving, who you are defending so personally is quiet. So I wonder why you, who is supposed to be his representative, is so personal about the issue. Yes, I know the lady wore trousers, but why have you taken it so personal? It's like a mission you gave yourself. Are you really sure you are doing that for God? Okay, the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers. What is your own business? We do a lot of things that look spiritual. But brothers and sisters, the foundation of it is self. Self. The need for self. So we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy whenever you see someone with something nice something in you reacts jealousy self-centeredness it would have been me why should this lady be having this when did she i mean can you imagine this guy wanting to marry her ah come on something is wrong there is a story we must tell the brother self-centeredness how about preachers we love crowds like this we claim it's for the glory of god but underlying it is our desires that's why pastors put pressure on members they come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work when you see the way they are putting pressure this cannot be of god it's too personal why don't you let god take charge of his own kingdom Koinonia is quiet this night. Myself. For me. So we go to pray. Lord, I trust you for a car. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My God. You can spiritualize. Do you know, I love the word because Jesus is the word. And the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, give me a car for your glory. And then he says, since it's for my glory, walk with my own timing. And he said, no, Lord, give me a car now for your glory. And God is saying, no, it's for my glory. Let me control the timing. I say, Lord, you, I force you by sowing a seed. Give me a car now. It's for your glory. And God said, just remove the for your glory. And say, give me a car now. Before I know what to do with you. <laughs> we think, we think because we are saying for your glory. It is spiritual listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure are you getting that five o'clock people wake up in every city while they are praying, Jesus, I thank you. This is a beautiful day. What they are saying in the spirit is, Scapegoat, how are you? I'm, I'm awake today. I hope I can use you today to please achieve my goals. Amen. That's what they thought they did. That's what they call devotion. To ease the guilt and then they begin their work. They do everything that they do. And then they come back and say, God, I don't know why you are not doing this. You have to do this. And then you will take the glory. We, we, we cap our self-centeredness with that statement. Be glorified. Be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state. Where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I will, maybe this guy is backsliding. 
are you seeing so the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages i will think i am growing spiritually but it's self-centeredness that's why some of you came for koinonia this night i know you love god but the truth about it is that that's not the reason let me tell you how you know we are self-centered whenever we do not get our desires our responses become ugly five minutes before your desire you were trusting that the woman will not die lord i know you i take you by your word for your glory lord in the name of jesus i am your servant and then the person the person dies and all of a sudden your ego is on the line no 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 no. let's raise this person back to life and you try and try and nothing happens and your ego is on the line i watch it happen to people you prophesy to somebody in the name of jesus you are going to get a job and you see the pressure on you men of god prophesy like that and they go back and say oh god please let this word come to pass it looks spiritual it is your word so you are in such a passion to bring it to pass so that they can say apostle prophesied and like he said it came to pass is god helping us this night are you learning something self-centeredness brothers and sisters are you seeing the damage it has caused to us sister are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful you may not marry the will of god because although in your prayer you are saying lord is only your will all that is talk in reality you have already painted the picture of the man the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man you have painted it it's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of god to find expression on restraint here are the things that jesus said himself let's look at a few scriptures jesus himself said this john 17 verse 1 please give it to us media let's hurry up i want us to pray john 17 verse 1 john 17 verse 1 these words spake jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven father the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now joshua selman give him money give him faith give him increase but jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. There are things I know that can touch the heart of God. Are we together? There are things I know by my experience with God that touches the heart of God. More than faith, believe me. More than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God. Jesus look at Jesus who do being equal with God equal with God I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point father remember that our glory make sure you never forget it I'm only here for three and a half years I'm coming back make no mistakes no new election in heaven I am here my position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted I'm calling on you you better answer me Jesus submitted himself and said glorify me 
so that you will be glorified brothers and sisters this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality do you know this is what Jesus came to give us there's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament let me tell you if you meet Jesus today he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament whether you are under grace or law is nonsense he's going to ask you one question who is seated at the throne of your heart Jesus came to deliver us the very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness not from a life of works no from a life of self-centeredness the motivation behind our activities being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ brothers and sisters I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or new you are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer the essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order the essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where Christ himself will be seated the Lord gave me a revelation this morning both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin the only difference was one executed it openly whereas the other one kept it which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have both of them were tired of the leadership of their father one had the courage to express it one kept it they wanted ownership and here's what the first one said the first one said give me that self-centeredness there give me i know you gave me access but i don't want access because the access is in your name i now want it in my name give it to me the younger the elder brother did not say give it to me but it was in his heart listen i'll prove it to you when the prodigal son returned back and they were celebrating him what happened to the elder brother he became angry and this is what he said father i have served you all these years you have not even given me a small um you know a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends you see the offense the self-centeredness was still there in other words lord i have served you will you not reward me see this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that i always balance i've been insulted many times because of this I tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with God it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see Jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and walk in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk i give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle and he said why sitters thou idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ushering department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen i know there are times we can tie things to god but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with god it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory 
I will do anything to behold you as my king. One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see to be hold you as my king. I want to be where. John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, uh, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But, I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and see no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. Are we together? The essence of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is not legalism and religion. The essence of Christianity is not even evangelism. The essence of Christianity is not heaven. The essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money. The essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing. The essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days. You fast with yourself at the center of your heart. You have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program. I assure you, you are not going to touch the anointing. A heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come. Okay, Lord. This is the lady I want to marry. Oh, I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. Be done. Say thy will. This is the language of a Christ-centered life. Lord, I want to go to London. It's always been my desire. However, I realize that my life is not my own. The Bible says I've been bought with a price. You don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you. He paid for you completely. In fact, whether you are born again or not, you are still his property. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Right? 
So whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son, you still belong to him. Listen to what Jesus said. My meat, this is what moves my life. My nourishment, my satisfaction is to do the will of who? Him that sent me and to finish it. I am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will. So if in the course of doing the will of God, I operate certain principles and I enjoy blessings while I'm wearing the nice suit, while I'm driving the nice car, my gaze is set on seeing him glorified. So prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because I met it on my way to pleasing God. Whether or not I met it, I am determined to still finish pleasing him. So Paul says, what then shall separate us from the love of God? Look at this. The apostle who brought himself back to life, they killed Paul. Immediately they went, he came back to life and shook himself. My God, a man who wrote two third of the gospel, this is what he said, for, for me to live is Christ. I don't know for you, but for me to live is Christ. Then even if I die, listen, Paul was not saying if I die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me. If you die as a result of armed robbery, it's not gain. It's a loss because one, you are going to hell. Number two, the kingdom is not advanced through that. But that Paul was trying to say, look, my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering. And regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise, it is secondary. So compared to the fulfillment of God's program, your marriage is secondary. That marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week. And then later, the number 27 is now God, your will be done. Exclamation mark. After you have written everything and vented out your lust. He sees. He looks from heaven. The Holy Spirit sees our motivations. While we pray, he's watching us. While we do the things that we try to do, he's watching us. While we gossip about people, you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve. It's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own. That you are not willing to hand over to the cross. Let me tell you, if you want to love God, he will love me for what I'm teaching you this night. It's the key to make spiritual men. A life that is completely out. And you see, some of us, we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered. Are we together? We come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered. They look at you and say, promise, how old are you? And you say, uh, maybe I'm, 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 I'm 32, or I'm 30, or I'm 35. And they say, ah, you should have a car by now. Ah, ah. What are you saying? You should have a car and have a five children and this. And then that challenges you. And you go back and say, Lord, they are insulting you. God said, they are not insulting me. If they are insulting me, I will react. I'm not offended. I say, God, me, I'm offended. I'm serving you. <laughs> you see, we create all kinds of theological messages. Let me tell you. If he's the one taking the glory, why are you taking the shame? Listen, whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame. Please help me. Why do you claim God is taking the glory but you always take the shame? Are we together? Take it half on me, David. See how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory. We are not. There's a song in my spirit. And the shout of the earth will be your praise. God forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name all the glory lord is yours god forever all the glory is yours listen lord jesus if i remain barren like this i give you praise i will never stop serving you but it is your reputation so let the pressure go to him are we together the moment people look at you and say are you a woman or a man 
direct the shame to him but you sit down and absorb the shame and say god give me a man child or i die and god says this thing you are doing is not for my glory it's spiritual you are sincere i'll show you why many people never get rich they think the key is doing business they think the key is after all of these things god looks at your heart and says no sir you are better off without it than you are with it because when it comes to your heart it will possess you and tear you so you see that it's not all about imparting anointing apostle i'm not seeing crowds in my ministry i know if you speak a word the doors will open and here i'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity but you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say watch me when i come back you will see what will happen to this church your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road sweating and praying feeling spiritual and you could not wait to see me the moment you receive that anointing whether or not you thought you received it you were in a hurry and you say from today don't play with me anyhow apostle laid hands on me see the picture aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results they never change suddenly they only manifested it i told you the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother we keep i used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother but i found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing one was quiet with his own while the other one executed it hallelujah Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will it is okay to have your will it is okay to have your desires only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny and if need be give way for the will of god to prevail are you hearing what i'm saying now yeah your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of god if at any point your desires no matter how intelligently constructed if there is a difference from your desires and god's desires one must bow and for many of us largely it's been god's desires bowing so salary leads you to the job are we together you look at the lady and say kai i like the way this lady speaks don't you think she'll be a nice wife you see let me tell you something brothers let me give you a frank advice if you keep being carnally minded i give you two guarantees guarantee number one you will miss out on the will of god two you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage you have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on god i saw that lady figure eight be careful be very very careful I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us, but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God. There is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Here's the language of spiritual. Find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will, 
I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I said, ah, I don't understand clarify when you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you there are dimensions you will never enter and the spirit drove Jesus he didn't say Jesus are you in harmony with me let's go to the wilderness you are going to get power there if you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life your life will be too slow for impact you have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say lord your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't have to wait until i understand you are too good to destroy me mm. you are too good to destroy me so whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say god you save kai if i were an unbeliever by now i would have done something God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you will rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God five years after marriage no child and people come and you know people are so naughty they can say something and say ah, madam you are serving god what is all this one at least go go for koinonia now eh apostle is anointed he can is he pride what is stopping you and then after listening to those things you can go back and cry and say oh god give me a child or i die no you say father a child or no child let me tell you one truth me and you we are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, what, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? Is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things? God will never. I cannot reduce God. To the issues of my life the petty issues of my life and say god you are uh, uh, me ask him ask him you are spiritual people will i ever open my mouth and tell god he's not faithful why that what happened just because there was no tea to eat you to tea to drink and bread to eat you carry the bible and run around heaven oh god are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting? Self-centeredness. This is why the anointing does not work in the life of people. This is why God does not lift certain people. Inside, outside, online, you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you. 
can your will bend to the will of God look at me if your will cannot bend to the will of God you are carnal it's not an insult it's a description you are carnal and self-centered let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God when sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life if God says Joshua Selman remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone I don't say oh God see let's be real me I'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and I'm not talking of small things your turn singlet God says give you say, ah, after all I was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving God will never ask you to give what they gave you. He will ask you to give what you worked for. He's very smart. If he says, if he, he, look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to. Because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression when satan comes to you he studies the things that have not been surrendered to god that becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life hallelujah let me tell you something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not if the lord asks me now and says son let this be your last sermon as joshua selman in the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, I'm standing before him. I will not lie to you. When I drop this mic, no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach. I will cry because I have a lot of passion for this. But I love him more than that. If you like, carry placard, bring back apostles, move around with it and say, no, you must come back. The demon that manipulated your mind you must come back i said i understand you are human if i were you i would do the same thing but i'm not going back again let me tell you brothers and sisters listen i have laid down things in my life you will not believe it's a price some of us finances whenever money is leaving you even if you are keeping it i don't mean you are giving it just like you are keeping it's not in your pocket you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality materialism and self-centeredness joined together god does not want your money what does he do with it god does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love God but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of God interrupt anything Lord don't come and interrupt my program I have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers that's why people are confused in Nigeria they don't know what to do with their lives they claim they are hearing God they claim they are walking with God but their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful are we together the quest to buy a car the quest to get married the quest to have children you have all girls and somebody is asking you ah kilo day we need girls and boys so and you now turn and land the warning on your wife say madam you had that thing please i'm tired of this embarrassment oh yeah let's pray lord give us a child for your glory no give us a child for my ego my masculinity is being insulted and i want to use you to cure it and god says no way i'm not that cheap brothers and sisters this night i want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like job job lost everything in his life as if that were not enough you can lose any other thing if you have your health you are okay 
he lost his health dogs would come and lick the source of job do you know what that means imagine seeing ali kodangote on the streets of zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark dirty wrapper and people look and say job you where were the friends you helped and job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said job curse god and die and job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me i know i've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes the three hebrew boys said oh king let it be known unto you that our God will deliver us. We know that there is a provision in him to deliver us. However, even if uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one, you call even if doubt. Hey, nothing. My husband must come December. Lord, I tell you, I've sown seed. I am even taking communion. Please don't give God headache with all these stories. Save yourself all that immaturity. Say, Lord, I give you praise. I'm showing you the secret to peace. There are men and women who have found peace. You see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in God that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression. It's not about the crowd. It's about his kingdom. It's not about Joshua Selman. It's about his kingdom. I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament. What they preach the new, in the New Testament is they say, okay, now there's no more works. Jesus has done everything. Enjoy. That's complete nonsense. It's an incomplete truth. The key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered. The motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory there's nothing that gives my life joy as that name be that word be glorified lord be glorified it's my statement every time when i pray all i tell him is be glorified be glorified preparing for miracle service lord i thank you i love you with all my heart your people are coming they are trusting that you will use me and lord i thank you be glorified every time i stand on this stage and i look at you believe me i have no business trying to impress anybody his glory his glory that's why i do the things that i do we just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year sometimes while we are traveling when we're on transit i just sit down the last meeting was last week and we had to leave I think 4 30 in the morning to catch up with our flight to lagos and while we we're going in the night i was saying what is all this why am i risking my life like this i didn't sleep i wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and i had to what am i looking for ministry am i so dull that i cannot write a book can't i do a webinar are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible I can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are, gotta be where you are, I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night some of you the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head that load is not from god the bible says my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it is a discourse with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 you say me i'm just 25 what what made that worry added an age that was not given by god you see people worry all the time they get up in the morning they are worried ah the bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit this is scripture you know honestly speaking sometimes when 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 i drive around the road or when i stand i start laughing in the car i'm just laughing because i'm saying my god what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an armed robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this we will steal this one then we'll run out he may die this night that's his mindset when jesus says i will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping he's under pressure the messages i'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like i'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like one thousand more people how can we do that your ego on the line forcing you to wake your leaders in the night in the name of leaders meeting but it's simply your ego on the line please rest prophesy to someone close to you say rest say it rest i bring you a system in the kingdom where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems look at this come sir if this guy is an armed robber watch this this is an example if he's an armed robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that a, an armed robber again that's not an armed robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand there is are you wearing versace or this and the other person said kai you see i'm tired of all this tailor tailor thing this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around i need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular with one before christmas it's unnecessary that money can pay your rent your small house that you are you are paying unnecessary things listen please i want you to write this down the only thing that is worth your blood the only thing that is worth your blood listen to me is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage two things 
they are the only things that the bible places so much priority onto even unto them thank you are we together i think it was last week or the week before last i sang a song i will sing it again when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what i'll do with my life this is the part of the song that i really like We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say i reject worry say it i reject it no you came with culture but i reject you i reject self-centeredness i hand over the management of my life to the king of kings and the lord of lords whatever god cannot do cannot be done no whatever god cannot do let no man fool you that can be done Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having going online wanting to like every lady capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense that self-centeredness on rampage hand over that rubbish to god and rest if god does not give you a husband cut walk jump pray in tongues cook you will never marry until he gives it a man can have nothing except it is given unto you if God does not open access to wealth, do business, buy, sell, sell cement, sell sand, do anything. I assure you, you will never have this thing. In the kingdom, it's not an achievement, it's a trust. He said, my son, give me your heart. God does not anoint you, try to start a ministry. You will be shocked that you are preaching well, yet nobody will come because it has not been given. Everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven you will never have it the worry of men 
is killing them listen listen because of the healing ministry i study a lot about health do you know i have found out i'm not a doctor we have doctors here but most of the disease what we call it disease people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them i tell you i have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service I, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here your ego will not allow you to leave you say no way god collect it i will buy and you buy it and it never gives you joy when you insist on taking what god did not give you he will take back something he gave you write it down when you insist on taking what god did not give you believe me he will take back something he gave you we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord i will raise your banner high i shine your light so bright i sing in honor of you you know you know my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport we just get to the airport and because we arrived late we've missed our flight they have they have learned this that i don't worry if someone calls me now and says apostle your house is on fire your car is on fire everything is on fire your bank is on fire i will tell them let me finish koinonia when i finish i look at it i say okay so what bond there's nothing we can recover glory be to god i give you praise do you know what i'm going to do i'll go back and i'll sleep to wake up and say ah my life <laughs> no i've grown up you know what we say alex okay in house it'll never happen never happen i'm giving you the secret of rest some of you are surprised is it really true because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind you are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry you never believe that there can be such a reality it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness 
please please hear me hand over your life to god I, i'm not i don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this I, handing your life to god is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our heart but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours i've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry i don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom i imagine how depressed i would have been if i were doing ministry by myself and my strength i live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more i decrease my worry decreases whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house i i mean let him let him handle everything he's not in me as a tenant he's in me as a landlord i give you the secret of peace quit the life of self-centeredness finances all of this I, i'm trying to do this keep your ego on the line if you ever seek prosperity let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom if your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom one gentleman came and met me and he said that um that he wanted to be to me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right I see the shoe you are wearing i see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you're not going to give you are only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable god is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it but his way do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised ha, when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce uh -uh. my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let satan see you rejoicing 
Huh? You are you are a graduate. You are you are masters. You even have PhD. No job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, huh? and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus, be praised be glorified not in the name of jesus i will go about what kind of i'm tired of unbelievers mocking me let them mock if you take the shame what are you doing with the glory he cannot take the glory and give you the shame whoever takes the shame should also take the glory rise up on your feet take over take over I have come to the end of myself Take over, take over I have touched the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, hey, take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. point number one lord take away this load from my life lift your voice and begin to pray take it away this unnecessary pressure to prove a point this unnecessary pressure is making me greedy is making me covetous take it away from my life Koinonia, pray. Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two listen you are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced listen some of you have bitter jealousy you love god but if you ever see something that is not in you 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 get resentful covetousness high-mindedness you crave for recognition you will claim you don't but it's written all over your life your appetite for recognition is to a fault you may not directly go to look for it but when they bring it the way you jump at it shows you desire it are we together what of lost lost your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory i am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others 
what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the Antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition I like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant don't claim there's nothing to pray for selfishness lord deliver me pray open your mouth and pray jesus deliver me from lust deliver me from pride i have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it i'm so obsessed by my desires i don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh god are you praying i have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what i want are you praying hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes I, i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is god speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures the discipline to have empathy 
for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office they organize night vigil everybody is seated at home peacefully the next thing you see one man of god who just enter like a thief and start singing around and he'll call everybody and nobody will sleep that night because the man has a problem but when somebody is about to die and they say ah my husband let's pray say, no 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 that's their business our society is full of self-centeredness that's why many husbands never enjoy their homes they claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that i not only receive results but that i don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires lift your voice and pray empathy of the feeling of others the bible says so we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it when the election Nigeria's election and the president now won Jonathan did something I'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many African nations right now leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happened when you create a sense of empathy don't say I want the shoe so bad if I must steal I will steal I want the phone so bad if I must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask please grow up don't put people in trouble because of your desires it's too selfish one more time you are going to pray and say Lord help me I'm tired of self-centeredness now my eyes have been opened and I'm seeing how much because of my life so many people's destinies are almost been destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today i receive grace to shut my mouth my blackmail has destroyed too many people 
I have joined the hands of the heads of good friends. I have caused trouble for too many people. It's not worth it. I'm a child of God. stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say Lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let I will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but Lord I declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when I tell you nothing aside from the purposes of God is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Malaba Sabrahasikete Balanaba. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We're reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We're rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you. In the eyes of Jesus, your reverence for God is more important than the forgiveness of your sins. Look at it. After this man, I pray. Hmm. Jesus is teaching here. Hallowed be your name. That is the foundation for everything that I do. I want to reverence you. That is the reason why I will not go and smoke. It's not just because I'm running away from hell. No. I desire that you be lifted. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, your purposes. Are you seeing now? This is your prayer. The moment you reference the Father, the next priority is anything that will move his purposes. Look at this. I hallow your name and I desire your kingdom to come, your influence. And that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth. So he focuses on the will of God. Is that how you pray? No. Your needs. That's what you drum heaven with. You sing one or two prayers and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven. But he's teaching us how to pray. Your kingdom come. This is what I want. Next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that I can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come. On that wise, give us this day our bread. Next verse. Because I want your kingdom to come. And I know that you are a holy God. That my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you. 
forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing i ever ask god that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it if the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it it is useless simple it is completely useless we're rounding up from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do for jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus so from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens it's all about you let me make a very serious altar call now please nobody moving there are two altar calls I'm going to make. Number one, those who truly need to give their hearts to Jesus. There are men and women here. Listen, some of you are listening to me and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. The greatest show of self-centeredness is rejecting the Son of the living God. The Bible says this is a testimony that God has given unto us eternal life. It says, and this life is in His Son he who has the son has eternal life there are people here inside and outside online following us please you may have heard me make altar calls like this or any other man of god and you've not taken it serious and then there are those who are not serious with god you just know that you need to be delivered from this life of self-centeredness i like you in the name of jesus christ very quickly those two groups of people come out quickly 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 celebrate them as they come quickly inside and outside god bless you as you come god bless you as you come from my heart to the heaven jesus be in the center it's all about you from my heart keep coming keep coming save time now let me tell you something 
one of the greatest decisions any man can make in his life is to get serious with God I still want to make one more altar call there are people here you are just not serious with God just that's your own issue you are completely not serious with God or the things of God join them if the Holy Ghost is telling you you are you are the person apostle is talking about quickly please join them join them quickly inside and outside please join them you shouldn't be thinking about it you should know whether or not you are serious with God as the Holy Ghost is speaking and say no you have to take God seriously God cannot be one of those things in your life it's time to be serious with the things of God join them God bless you God bless you don't be ashamed this is a family God bless you keep coming God bless you God bless you don't mind anybody looking at you everybody is here for himself God bless you keep coming I appreciate every one of you here there are people here who are already born again they are just trusting God to deliver them from self-centeredness and there are people here who are making a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ I'll pray for the first category of people first if you belong to both then you can pray both prayers those who are trusting God there are many of you who should be here you are seated there your ego is refusing to leave you but no problem join in the prayer say after me Lord Jesus deliver me from self-centeredness deliver me from being the God of my own world the God of my own decisions this night I hand over my decisions I hand over my destiny to you let there be a switch from a self-centered life to a Christ-centered life where your will your desire and your purposes override every other thing that I may personally desire I receive that grace in the name of Jesus now for those of you who came out for altar call you are praying say after me Lord Jesus say don't look at me say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I have heard your word and tonight I make Jesus Lord of my life I decree that I'm born again I'm a child of God I declare that from today I'm walking in the light of God's love in the name of Jesus Christ now please only those who came out for the regular altar call those who came out for you know to pray and break self selfishness you can just as you go you can just return to your seat and not everybody I know there are some of you who came out you responded to the altar call specifically to make your ways right with Jesus or to make a decision you are backsliding and you are coming back to Jesus both categories I want you to follow the lady waving her hands we're going to have your details we'll capture your details and we'll communicate to you more formally God bless you please honor them appreciate them very quickly God bless you Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.